this week's challenge Wednesday, we have our patient Arya, and Arya is a 20 year old seasoned athlete and is now 12 weeks pregnant without complications. During a routine auscultory exam of the patient's heart, which of the following should the therapist be the least concerned about? So we have A, pericardial friction rub, B, presence of an S4 heart sound, C, presence of an S3 heart sound, and D is presence of a loud cooing sound at the second intercostal space on the right. All right, complete mouthful right there. All right, so let's go up to the top. Again, we have Aria. She's a 20-year-old seasoned athlete. All right, so we got an uh, we got an athlete on her hands who is 12 weeks pregnant without any complications. What does that mean to you? I mean, I would say that this patient's relatively healthy, wouldn't you say? I mean, there's nothing in here to let me know that there's something going on with the pregnancy or there's something going on with, with her heart or anything like that, right? So relatively healthy person. Now, during a routine auscultory exam of the patient's heart. Now, let's stop there. Hold on. Before we really go into the rest of the stem, let's stop. During a routine auscultory exam of the patient's heart. So we're listening to the patient's heart. Like, what would you expect to be finding with this seasoned athlete who's pregnant? Would you expect to be finding anything special? I mean, again, this patient's relatively healthy, right? So we wouldn't really be expecting something to be wrong, per se. I mean, it could be. So the rest of the stem says, which of the following should the therapist be the least concerned about? What, would, what should we not be worried about with this seasoned athlete who's pregnant without complications. So let's go into the answer choice. We got A, pericardial friction rub. B, presence of a S4 uh, heart sound. C is presence of an S3 heart sound. And D is the presence of a loud cooing sound at the second intercostal space on the right. All right. So A, pericardial friction rub. What is that really about? Think about this now. Slow up the car a little bit. Put on cruise control if you have to pericardial friction rub what is that you should be thinking to yourself okay so that's a leathery sound we do hear it on heart auscultation all right we can hear it i should say pericardial friction rub is this leathery scratchy sound that we get and it's usually when there's some type of condition like pericarditis because it's an inflammation around the heart tissue all right you know this thing called the pericardium, right? It's a part of the heart anatomy. Well, there can be inflammation in there. And every time the heart beats, you're getting this, this irritation, this scratching sound. That's called a pericardial friction rub. You do hear this on heart auscultation if a patient has pericarditis. All right. Now, do we have any reason to believe that our patient has that, first of all? All right. That's what you should be saying to yourself. Is this even likely that our patient has that? So that's the first no. And then at the same time, would we be concerned if, a, if we did hear this with this patient? What do you say? You should be saying, hex, yeah, I'd be concerned. Yeah, patient shouldn't have that. So that is not the answer. Remember from the question stem, which one are we the least concerned about? Least concerned. And we would be concerned about pericardial friction rub. All right, let's go to B. B says the presence of of an S4 heart sound. Now, this is where, again, I try to memorize this stuff when I was in PT school, try to retain as best as I could. I always used to forget like S4, okay, what the heck is that? Um, the way I used to remember it though is S1, S2 are the normal heart sounds, you know, like lub dub, right? Well, S1, S2, and what comes after S2? S3, right? And so that's how the sound goes, S1, S2, and S3. And notice how um, if we talk about S4, well, where would S4 occur? It's not going to happen after S2, right? Because S3 would come after that. So the only logical answer would be, well, it could come after S3 and right before S1. And that's exactly how I remembered it is S4 always comes before S1, all right. And so the S4 sound comes before S1. What does it really mean to us, though? It means typically that your patient is having some type of thickening of the left ventricle. Thickening, y'all. Scar tissue formation. Why do we get scar tissue formation? 
Well, a lot of times we can get that from things like myocardial infarction, you know, damage, necrosis of the heart cells, and then scar tissue builds up there. That can produce this thing called an S4 heart sound, myocardial infarction. The other thing that could produce it, think about it now, thickening of the left ventricle. What could produce that? You should be saying, well, if a person has hypertension, high blood pressure, the heart has to push out against that, that pressure, push out against those, those arteries that are very closed down and constricted. So guess what happens? The heart muscle starts to hypertrophy, get very bulky, get very thick, which produces the S4 heart sound. So bird's eye view, what is the heart sound? Well, it comes before S1 and it's usually present when someone has thickening of the left ventricle due to myocardial infarction or someone who has prolonged hypertension. Now, thinking about it from that perspective, is this something we would be concerned about if we found an S4 heart sound with this patient? Yes, we would, because there's no reason why this healthy seasoned athlete who's pregnant without complications should have an S4 heart sound. She shouldn't. All right. So let's go ahead and eliminate B. Let's look at C. C says the presence of an S3 heart sound. Okay. S3 heart sound, when we're thinking about this, is also can be called a, a, a ventricular gallop. All right. You need to think about this as coming after S2 and also being very, it's sometimes a physiological normal. Children have this. Seasoned athletes have this. People who are pregnant have this. It's usually due to the fact that there's some type of compliancy, overcompliancy of the ventricle. What does that really mean? That it's typically like dilated or it's lean tissue, very lean, right? You get that with a seasoned athlete, lean tissue. And so when blood rushes into that left ventricle, it strikes the very uh, 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 overly compliant tissue. And then it makes this sound called the S3 heart sound. Okay, so here's the deal. The one thing I want you to remember from a bird's eye view is that it happens after S2 and that it is normal in patients who are seasoned athletes, pregnant or even children. All right. Now, it can be due to the fact that, you know, you have a patient who has weakening of their heart. It could be present. So it can be pathologic. But for the MPTE, I want you to know that it can be normal. In those three populations I just told you. So is this something that we're really concerned about? Do we think that our patient has a weak heart? Is there any reason to believe that? No. If anything, their person should have a pretty strong heart. So I like C right now. I think it's the one that we're the least concerned about. But I need to look at D to make sure. D says the presence of a loud cooing sound at the second intercostal space on the right. So what I want you to do, put the weights down real quick, uh, slow up the car, stop for a moment. What is the second intercostal space on the right? Like, what are we listening for there? Anybody know? This is important, all right? You should know that we're listening for the aortic sound, right? What's going on with the aorta? If we have the presence of a loud cooing sound, what does that mean? It means that we're dealing with aortic stenosis. There's no reason why we should have that loud, musical, windy kind of sound at the, S, uh, at the second intercostal space on the right. That is telling us that our patient potentially has aortic stenosis. Now, is that something I would be worried about for my patient who is a seasoned athlete, pregnant without complications? You bet your bottom dollar it is. I would be concerned there. And so D cannot be our answer, y'all. So let me read this to you again. The question's asking, during a routine auscultory exam of the patient's heart, which of the following should the therapist be the least concerned about? Well, we should be the least concerned about the presence of an S3 heart sound. The final answer here is C. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. For those of you who didn't listen, this is one area I need you to understand for the MPTE, not just the locations of where you would listen to the aorta or the semilunar valves or the tricuspid, the mitral. You need to know that for sure. But you also need to know what is the S4? 
What is the S3, the S1, S2? What do these mean to us? And what do these indicate? Because it's going to be really important during your auscultory exam to find these and make the right of judgment, whether you want to refer that patient out or not. All right. So super important information for you to know here. Okay. Now I never want to just leave you with that for the, so for those who are on the podcast right now, I want you to go into your show notes, click the link in there because I have a cheat sheet and the cheat sheet is going to talk to you about S1, S2, S3, S4, give you a little bird's eye view of those, everything that you need to know for the APTE. I'm also going to talk to you about all the different areas that you need to listen to in the thorax. All right, so you're 100% prepared for this area on the MPTE. All right, so go in there and get that right now.